your ecology host, Chuck Ghost, and welcome to the second Think Tank episode. The first one was not really quite the way I wanted it with guests, but this one, I have guests coming on here. It's a brand new style of ecology where I bring up a topic and get thinkers to share their ideas. It's a twist on the traditional Q&A style, which is one guest, but a twist that I hope you'll enjoy. Now, this summer, the Deloitte Greenhouse Experience Group, they surveyed more than 16,000 working professionals working in more than 4,000 organizations around the world and across a variety of industries, all the way from the C-suite down to junior staff members. Now, why did they do this? Well, they asked their preferences regarding recognition. And it was all about how employees want to be recognized for what and by whom. And they found some really cool preferences across professionals, but they also found some differences based on generation, organization level, and even gender. And it's a really great report that we'll share the link in the show notes, but you can also just go out and search for Deloitte and thank you, and you'll find the full PDF to the study. But that's why I wanted to pull this think tank together. I wanted to hear from the internal comms world what they thought of this study and their takeaways slash learning moments. And we have four really great thinkers joining us today. And I'm gonna first get their thoughts as I introduce each of them on this topic. So first up is Stephanie Ramos. She is the communications manager at Mount Sinai Health System. Stephanie and I have have chatted before at many events, so I was glad to have Stephanie join. So Stephanie, welcome to the Think Tank. And uh, what did you think of this Deloitte study? Thank you so much, Chuck. Um, There were a couple of things that I was excited to see that Deloitte was measuring, Um, particularly the who and the what of recognition. It was funny, you sent this study out, you know, on LinkedIn, and that same day I was rounding, um, I work in a a hospital, and some of the employees were saying, we don't have a way to recognize each other, and, and, you know, we have have to make those channels available, Um, and so I think it's really awesome that they were asking uh, the participants of the study, is it only leadership? Is it each other? And I think that we have a responsibility to create opportunities for both leadership to recognize employees and for employees to recognize each other. Um, So I thought that was really a great question to ask. And in addition, um, I liked the idea of defining success and and what do people want to be recognized for is is another great thing to think about. And when it comes to -to peer-to-peer recognition, why do you think to some employees that might mean more than say being recognized by their manager, even someone higher up? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, it goes back to, I know I've heard you speak about this before and a lot of our other colleagues, but the employee voice has a little bit higher trust than some of our leaders. And I think it's because colleagues on your level understand your work on a deeper level than leaders may understand it. And I think probably the best of both worlds is to have that leadership presence there, but to be nominated by a colleague is probably the most powerful way to involve both parties, to feel really seen by your colleagues, to also be acknowledged by leadership. I think that that's one powerful way we can recognize people. Thank you, Stephanie. I agree with you, the, especially that peer-to-peer part. I think it often gets missed in employee recognition programs because it does seem like it's centered around prizes or accolades from leadership, which is nothing wrong with that being a component of it, but sometimes that peer-to-peer certainly does get missed. So thank you, Stephanie. Next up, we've got Meg Mara. She's the VP of Internal Communications at Borshov. Uh, so welcome, Meg. And what were some of your takeaways or learning moments as you read through that Deloitte study? Yeah, so I have spent a lot of time thinking about this topic of, of recognition um, in an agency capacity and thinking about it on behalf of clients. But I think one thing that I think we all kind of intuitively feel and know as internal communicators is this idea that employees experience their relationship with an employer or they want to experience their relationship like a human relationship. And I, like I said, I, th- I think we all kind of know this. It's nice to see it um, corroborated and kind of proven out. 
in research and that organizations that can manage to, you know, the organizations are not human, but organizations that can manage to somehow get closer to this construct of offering a two-way, mutually beneficial touch point basis um, with um, the employee experience um, benefit um, in terms of larger, broader issues like employee engagement, satisfaction, retention, turnover. So what really struck me about this, um, this particular study, and I think Deloitte actually touches on this notion too, and another study that they do is their global human capital report, which comes out annually, this notion of, of humanizing um, the employee experience. Um, but, uh, and certainly I think that the things that are touched on in, in this study that uh, hyper customization, hyper individualization of, of rewards programs is kind of the, the way of, of the future, or certainly is a way of the future when it comes to internal communications and the employee experience. The thing that I took away from this study is that there are some universal kind of qualities, even among these business chemistry types. And we all have seen these different kind of archetypes as they're defined by Deloitte. I think McKinsey has some archetypes, some profiles too of employees and what their preferences are and what the nuances are between them in order to be able to develop these customized programs that address those things. But if you boil it all down to kind of a universal human quality, my big takeaway was that this notion of, of validation and this really human need for validation um, can be prioritized when you look at employee recognition. And, um, you know, how do you, how do you as an organization get to this place of authentic, meaningful validation? And, um, you know, what, what struck me is when we're, when we're counseling clients about how to get there, it can somehow just seem too intimidating to the idea of, what it would take to understand what every single employee needs and wants and prefers and the platform that they want to be communicated with. And, you know, don't get me wrong, best in class employers are already doing this. The names that we all hear and are familiar with, the Googles and the Amazons, um, you know, are doing this, so it's not impossible. But what do you do when it seems too, too big and too intimidating to, to bite off? you bring it down to um, those universal qualities. One of the ways that, you know, we, we talk about with, with clients about how to do that is this idea of, of symbolic acts, symbolic gestures. And I think it's important to, to define that as, I, when I say symbolic, I don't mean superficial. I mean that they are sim, symbolizing some kind of greater, um, greater notion. Um, so, and that's, that was my big takeaway is that thinking about this from the universal perspective, as well as um, understanding that the way this, the, the way things are going in today's landscape, this idea of, of customized, individualized internal communications in the employee experience, um, there are still some universal truths that we can go back to as internal communicators um, that can help organizations get on the path. Now, the two thoughts I have for you, Meg, and one I'm going to put you on the spot for this one. So as, and I'm in that consultant space as well, you want to walk the walk and talk the talk. Are, are there things that you guys see as at the agency level where you're advising companies on recognition and programs and maybe some of the things you've learned in that report that you're thinking to yourself like, oh man, we need to do that. Like we're not doing that even at the agency level. Yeah, and actually, I watched a three-minute video um, before before this that touched on this very subject um, that my boss actually sent to me. She knows I'm participating in this today, and um, you know, it, it talks about the the responsibility of of not just managers but peer-to-peer -peer recognition. And she said, you know, I want you to think about it. And are you intentionally, um, you know, recognizing good work, saying thank you? So I, I think you're right. It is something that we all say, yes, we need to do it. But when it comes down to a, a daily act, something that is habitual, something that is done with intent, um, something that is, that is meaningful, um, I think we all need to, to work on it. And, you know, even within my own organization, have we thought about, um, you know, what recognition means and how it, and how it is meaningful to our employees? 
Yeah, I think about that in the context when when there's that random act of kindness day that exists. And I'm thinking, how random is it when you have a day that you have to do it? Is that kind of the ironic nature of it? But how do you make that a part of your daily life? Now, there's another something else you mentioned around humanizing the employee experience. So what have we done to not make it human? Like the employees are people. So what have we done? Is, is it that, that we don't view this, we view it as that work relationship versus that personal relationship with your work? 10 years ago, this was not as much of a, a topic because, you know, right or wrong, um, employers didn't have to work quite as hard in the economic downturn to, to keep good talent. And now all of a sudden, recently, you know, organizations all over are waking up to this need to be more relational and less transactional um, you know, with, with their employees. So I don't know if anything has, has really changed. We're all humans working for an organization that employs humans. Um, but, you know, when you, when you think about how the landscape has changed, you know, this is now an imperative for organizations to figure out. So it's going to be different for every, for every organization, but how, how do you make your employee experience more relational and less transactional. Of course, we've all heard this and know it to be true, but it is driven by leadership. It is driven by culture. It is, of course, reinforced by line managers and frontline managers and from lived out from the bottom up. Um, but, you know, it, I think it does go back and just as all things in organizational culture do to, um, to being driven by senior leadership of an organization. Well, thank you, Meg. Now let's move along to Jess Roberts, a strategist at Synergy Creative. Jess, as you read through this report, was there anything that, that surprised you or really like dug in deep, either confirmed something you believed before or made you think about something in a new way? Uh, I think for me, there's, there are a couple of fundamental truths that sit at the heart of the report. And I think that's about what motivates us as individuals in the workplace. We all want to be recognized for a job well done. We all want to feel valued. And when we do feel valued, it enables us, it motivates us to do our best work. Um, and that's the sort of environment that you want to create for your colleagues. And I think all of that is kind of reaffirmed through the report. But what really stood out to me is that there's no one way that any workplace, any business can achieve this. There's no silver bullet. There's no golden ticket. There's no kind of cookie cutter formula that will give us the, the environment that, that will help our colleagues thrive. Um, and for me, I think what that tells us is that we really need to invest the time as internal comms pros, invest the time in getting to know our colleagues, understand what motivates them, understand what keeps them with you why do they stay in the positions they're in um, how do you hold on to that talent and when you, once you understand what really motivates them that's when you can start thinking about uh, creating a personalized or a tailored approach to your to your recognition um, process or platform or or however you however you phrase it but you know recognition really is a, a it's a personal thing it's it's something that speaks to the individual so i think in investing that time and understanding your audiences that's when you start to create something that will really cut through and 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 hit them we're we're you know hit them in the heart we we want to catch them you'll see some definitions of employee engagement are around like do does the person give extra effort does the person go above and beyond? No, those, those are some definitions of engagement. There are other definitions of engagement, and that's part of the problem with the conversation around engagement. But what role does recognition, and I would even say even the less gratitude play in this employee engagement discussion? Is it a key element? Is it a minor element? Like how, how important is it in that larger engagement discussion? Yeah, I mean, I think reward and recognition are always coupled together. Um, and, you know, reward is that is, is kind of that um, more, uh, it's, it's a process which is, is I guess it's, it's more, it's, it, tends to, it generally tends to be around salary or payment or bonuses, 
whereas the recognition bit it, it taps into to our behaviors and it, it it's kind of, it's more fundamental and sits at the heart of who we are and i think when thinking about that extra effort and people going the extra mile it's the recognition part that really makes the difference there um, and when you feel as though you've done a good job and you're recognized for doing a good job you're more motivated to put in that extra effort and to try that little bit harder you know that's a really good point about should we should we begin to separate reward and recognition because those can be two very different things that's a good thought because i was thinking through my one of my own experiences jess which Worked at a very large company, which yeah. had a rewards and recognition program uh, for this project that I did. I felt mm -hmm. like I'd already been recognized when the project was completed and people liked it. Seven months later, the reward came through because that's how long it took to process all oh, of the paperwork. Yeah. And it, wasn't, it wasn't a negative, but it was like, oh, like now we're doing that? Like seven Absolutely. Months later? Now that that was a different time, and I'm sure technology has helped improve <laughs> some of those things. But I like that idea of maybe do we separate those two and not not all recognition means to be a reward, not all reward really is part of a recognition. Yeah, and I do you know, I think the world of work moves really quickly and you know, we're all really busy people. There's there's a lot of pressure on us. And, you know, by the time you complete one project, you're on to the next. And often you haven't had a moment to think about or to reflect on what you've done and the successes and the things that you've learned. And if you're kind of if you're waiting for that six monthly or that annual um, recognition process or appraisal process to come back around before you get that that thank you or that job well done, you know how do how does that really impact your motivation as you move on to the next project so yeah i think there's there's certainly something to be said in it being a more um it may be a real time you know a real time process or, or something that's just a lot more frequent yeah i also had a story once i uh got an employee award kind of a best new employee award mm -hmm. And then three weeks later was laid off due to budget cuts. Oh no. So that shows you a little bit. <laughs> don't let the rewards go to your head. No, quite. <laughs> but but thank, thank you, Jess, for your thoughts there. Now let's, let's go on to Leah Bowden, head of internal communications at Close Brothers. Leah, thanks for sticking around for this. As you read through that report, what was something that, that again, caught you off guard or is something you think now it's changed your way of viewing recognition or something you're now going to tell other people, this is what we need to do around employee recognition? I think the key for me was really how nuanced the relationship is between employees and recognition. Um, and, you know, it's not just the form of recognition that's important. It's who that recognition comes from. Who gets to hear about it? Is it just the people in your team, the person who has given you that appreciation or the whole company? Um, and what is recognized? Is it effort? Is it success? I'd argue as well that you know you kind of have to recognize everything, including the struggle sometimes, um, because everybody and every workplace has people who are working for them who, for whom it's a struggle to come to work every day and get up and do the work that they do, and and that's the key for recognition. It's recognizing and really seeing people for what they do. Um, you know, I don't know of any companies that actually look at recognition that holistically um, with the exception of Deloitte perhaps um, and to be able to do that you need a really deep personal understanding of um, you know what motivates your employees um, and what are their drivers at any given time which will change necessarily as people go through life events um, and I, I don't think this is something that can really be um, achieved mm -hmm. at an organizational level um, you know we can approximate approximate using personas uh, as Deloitte have done um, and offer choices and a framework um, again as Deloitte has suggested at the end of the study but ultimately whoever's giving that recognition needs to understand and know the person they're giving it to for it to um, be internalized I think uh, and also the person giving the recognition needs to be empowered to provide what that employee wants. I think a challenge there is maybe sometimes getting employees to know what they want or admit what they want. Mm. And maybe this is coming to my own past life experiences, but yeah. when like a significant other says, Oh no, no, you don't have to send me flowers on my birthday, but they yeah. really want flowers on their birthday. They just don't want you to have to do flowers on their birthday. 
So it, yeah. I, think, I think that's a little bit of a challenge too, or how do you get mm-hmm. people comfortable sharing this is how I really, this is what's meaningful to me. And what if they said, no, I want to be yeah. announced on stage in front of everybody mm. and have yeah. that not sound egotistical. <laughs> um, I think there are two ways that you could approach it. Um, one is the idea that you kind of self-identify, right? What are, what, how would you like to be recognized? And in the same way as you might put on your kind of, um, ESN profile. My name is Leo. I like cats and I speak three languages. Um, this is how I like to be recognized. And that way you are kind of showing and sharing people how you want to be recognized and owning it. Um, the other thing is, um, as you say, you know, I think there's an awful lot of programming that goes into the way that we are and social programming and, and looking at who's doing what around you that makes you think, Oh, I need to be that way. I need to be the person and celebrated in front of everybody to to be known for doing a good job and I think it's you know raising examples of cases where that's not true you know you can celebrate people in their own way um, yeah I almost wonder too if it's if it's your peers and your coworkers maybe know what is the best way to recognize you but mm. if they see how you respond yeah I think it's more likely that your peers your co-workers understand um you know, the more rounded you so whether you are somebody who for whom it's really difficult to get up and speak in front of others never mind have your face plastered all over the internet um you know, that shouldn't detract from the fact that you're doing an absolutely brilliant job but i know that my colleague would much rather um receive a cactus and uh, a heartfelt thanks than um, you know, 3,500 people seeing her poster on the wall. And some other people might be offended if they get a cactus. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And again, it's down to that transaction in nature, right? Is the right. effort that I put in worth the reward that I got? And I liked your thought too around recognizing the struggle, that maybe it is about the work that you put in and not necessarily the end mm. result. And it really thinks, I've, I've long yeah. thought that it would be fun to do a, an entire comms conference centered around mm. failure. Yeah. And here's all Absolutely. the things that we tried that didn't yeah. work. And here's the things yeah. we learned from trying things yeah. that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because it's yeah. it's silly for us to think that all these things that when people present at conferences, mm. that this is mm. probably the one thing that hit out of 10 that didn't. Yeah, exactly. So you go to a conference and what you're seeing is everybody's highlight reel. Mm-hmm. But really what you want to see are the cases where we tried this, it didn't work. We tried something else, it didn't work. We tried it again. And, you know, the third time we actually had success, which is, you know, essentially what agile working, that buzzword that everybody knows and loves, um, is all about, right? Fail mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about those failures. It's still going to take a lot of effort to fail um, and recognize that, but just also don't give up and keep mm-hmm. going. Thank you all for for sharing your ideas. Now, I have a few questions I'm going to direct to a few of you here. One of the key messages that resonated with me in the conversation we've had today and in reading the report is the very simple nature of gratitude, which is a very personal thing. We see some people seem to be express gratitude more equally freely than others they make it maybe it's more intentional part of their lifestyle but how do you begin building gratitude into a corporate culture or is it more of like little sparks of gratitude that you hope spread so just from your standpoint how can this play out in a corporate culture i think there are there are a good few things that we can think about here firstly you know what what is the leadership role here how are they role modeling the desired behavior and and ultimately you know they they are the they are the most visible they are the ones that people will look up to potentially hopefully um and aspire to be like so if the right behaviors the right actions are are coming and coming from the top then then absolutely that that's kind of one of the the key linchpins that that we should start thinking about and then, you know, on a much smaller scale, it's the little things that count. It doesn't have to be big, grand gestures. 
it doesn't have to be big pots of money that, that are thrown into this. Um, you know, little thank yous, everyday reminders, creating those little moments every day. Um, we can all do that now. We don't have to be, um, you know, head of or senior or CEO. We can all say thank you now. And I think if we all take it on us, um, to take those small steps, you know, the cum cumulative effect of that is great. And then also just a piece of advice for you. If someone wants to throw a big pot of money at you, just take it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, take Definitely. It and enjoy it. Take it, take and then it. Go for, go for the <laughs> and then Meg, what are your thoughts on this? What, what role or how pervasive can gratitude be in a culture out there? Well, and, and, you know, we've been talking about this idea of, you know, separating rewards and, and recognition. And first, I think it's funny, you know, adults like to pretend like we don't like stuff, right? But actually, you know, we love stuff. We love big pots of money being thrown <laughs> our way. We love, we love rewards, right? But when it comes to getting at this more fulfilling and meaningful recognition of work, you know, I do think that comes through this very simple idea of, of gratitude. And I agree with Jess in that it has to be driven from the top, you know, as, as all things do related to organizational culture. And I think, you know, Jess, you were talking about, you know, uh, yes, people expect individualized communication, people expect customized um, employee experience, you know, but all people really are not different. You know, the, the things that deflate and discourage me are probably similar to the things that deflate and discourage you similar to the, the things that motivate and are encouraging to me on a basic human level are probably encouraging and motivational to you so the idea of, of marrying um gratitude with um you know the idea that culture has to be driven from from the top you know the, the way that those things are expressed is going to be different for for every leader and every culture and every organization. But I, I think the way to do it is as communicators, we know there are best practices to doing these things, right? You know, whatever it is, it has to be visible. It has to be authentic. It has to be applied with an intentional cadence and frequency. So I, I think marrying this, this best practices and communications with an organizational culture that emphasizes gratitude from, from the top down um, can be a way that um, this notion of gratitude can be imbued into an organization. Yeah, I think the probably where it's most powerful is where you see gratitude going in all directions, right? It's top down, lateral, top, you know, bottom up, where it is just simple thank yous. It is buying somebody's coffee that's behind you. It's all those little things at work add up to building relationships improving a culture, setting the tone for a culture, even if you started in your department doing things, ideas like that spread pretty quickly when they see the impact that it has in an organization. And now I want to talk with Lee and Stephanie a little bit more about how internal comms impacts employee recognition. What role, either as a function, as a process, internal comms plays in recognition, or is it truly something that's culturally based that internal communicators can impact? So Leah, what do you think here? Is this something that, because internal communicators are in such a unique position in that they do have a lot of power, they do have a lot of influence, but they don't always use it, but they are also employees. So they should be factoring that employee voice. So what role does that internal communicator play, Leah? Um, the commu internal communicators have roles at all levels of the recognition um, journey, I think. So, you know, we can play roles administering scheme, creating the actual makeup of the scheme. Uh, we normally own the channels through which our employees are recognized. Um, but ultimately, I think where we are most effective and most impactful is in connecting that recognition to the goals that the business wants to achieve. And um, you know, sometimes connecting and making those links is something that um, other uh, roles within the organization struggle with, and this is where we come into our own. So let's say you're trying to improve customer satisfaction. 
happy people, happy customers. Um, it's been proven time and time again that there is uh, a cause and effect. There. So let's connect what we are recognizing with the outcome that we want to drive. And that's where I think we can have an impact. And obviously then you would look at how do we best do that? What are the techniques and the tools that we employ? As Meg was saying, you know, we've got a lot of tools in our arsenal that we can use. And also that coupled with the insight, with the data that we're getting, how we make it visible really makes us well-placed to um, um, bring the best out of our employees, I think. And Stephanie, you kicked off this episode by talking about doing rounds and hearing your employees talking about peer-to-peer -peer recognition and wanting to do that. So how are you in your role impacting recognition? Or what role do you think you should play, I guess? Yeah, so I agree a lot um, with what Leah said. And, and just to add to that, the way I think about it is you're trying to sneak that gratitude and recognition in to everything you do and connect it back to those business outcomes, new initiatives, whatever's coming your way. Um, I think of it as like a, a very subtle ongoing satellite. You know, the, people should almost not notice that you're sneaking this in. It's, it seems like it's a message about something else, but they're getting this steady um, understanding that the company is, is really um, recognizing their employees and also appreciating them. So I think that that's, really important. And I, I also think that we can be um, educators for other people in the company and, and try to help other stakeholders, managers, leaders understand how to communicate this gratitude and, and just guide them, help them understand how to listen and, and, and do that rounding and, and find out exactly what the employees need. Thanks all of you for sharing your ideas on this. Now we're going to a little more personal on this topic of recognition. I want to go to each of you and I'll, I'll direct the conversation here around how you like to be recognized. And this is not a time to, you know, as we talked before, is this a socialized where this is what people think I would, should be recognized. So I'm going to say that if you want to be that person that gets name called on stage with a big trophy, say big name on, you know, on the trophy, um, so Stephanie, let's start with you. What is your preferred form of recognition? Well, I definitely like to be recognized by people who know my work. So my direct colleagues and whether it's being recognized by them or around them, right. Who, who really understand what I, I go through, I guess, on a daily basis. Um, and so I think that's the most meaningful for me. And then what about you, Leah? Um, so I thought about it in terms of the Deloitte report. So my who, what, where, when, and how. Um, so, you know, who do I want to recognize me? Honestly, anyone, so long as they are specific in recognizing what I've done. Um, the thing that really boils my blood is when you get the over and above uh, cliche rolled out. Um, so I don't care who, just please recognize actually what I did. Um, what I want my effort because, you know, internal comms is essentially a support function. We are in the background. You won't see us. So recognize the effort that goes into the highlight reels that you are showing. Um, where do I want that? Everywhere, please. Everywhere. Um, and in the moment, uh, it needs to be timely, Chuck, as you were saying, you know, you don't want it seven months down the line when you've done five other projects. Um, and how do I want to be recognized with a non-monetary time reward, please? Because I am <laughs> time poor. Give me half a day. Thank you. And what about you, Meg? Yeah, so when I think about, you know, when I've been most fulfilled, you know, working on something, it always goes back to like, being in the trenches with my colleagues, working on some sort of problem, solving some sort of problem. And so, you know, I think peer to peer in the moment recognition of, of effort, just like Jess is saying, not necessarily of, of end results, but um, recognition of, of the effort that went into something always um, ends up being what is most 
meaningful, you know, to, to me. Um, of course, in lieu of a super meaningful assignment, if my organization is listening, a big pot of money, it never hurts. Right. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I think, um, you know, the, the people that you're alongside working hard on something with the mutual recognition that, hey, this was hard or, hey, we did a great job or, hey, I really appreciated how you did X, Y, Z is the most meaningful for me. And then Jess, I've saved you for last on purpose here because I saw recently that you were recognized for your work at Synergy and now has been multiple times per the LinkedIn announcement. So first off, congratulations for that. Share what that recognition was <laughs> and was it in the right way you like to be recognized? Okay, great. I have, <laughs> how very <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> we should tell you, my response right now should tell you about, yes, my levels of introversion with things like this. Um, uh, was it the way that I would usually choose to be recognized. Um, well, firstly, the, the LinkedIn post was, was employee of the month and I've been very lucky to be nominated by my peers um, for two months running for, um, yeah, effort essentially working, you know, working really hard, putting in, putting in all the hours and, you know, helping um, make Synergy the, the success that it is. Um, was it the way that I'd like to be recognized? Um, well, I saw a really cool poster. <laughs> it was. It's so cool. So the way that we do it here at Synergy is that ev throughout the month, everybody um, writes a little comment or nice feedback on a big black chalkboard that we have in our big kitchen area. And ultimately, the people with the most uh, number of positive comments um, or, and, you know, points of recognition they um, they win the grand prize of title of Sinegai or Sinegal of the month. Um, and you get your name up in lights. And it literally is a big poster with your name up in lights. Um, and it's really lovely. And I think the thing that is most meaningful to me is that um, it's nominated by my by my peers. And you know that that really means a lot. Um, I think Personally, I'm quite shy, so the thought of just standing up in front of everybody is a little bit daunting. Not my favourite thing in the world. However, I did then post the picture on LinkedIn for the world to see. So who am I kidding? <laughs> now, are you going for the three-peat? Do you feel there's a target on I mean, your back now? I mean, I would very much like that. I'm quite competitive, but, you know, I need to share the love. I need to be, yeah, I need to let somebody else win the coveted prize. <laughs> Thank you, Leah, Meg, Jess, and Stephanie for coming on this episode of Think Tank. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted to have happen with these types of ecology episodes, which is bring up a topic and a lot of you weighing in, sharing your ideas, your perspectives, so that we can have a conversation uh, around this. And hopefully this sparks additional conversations uh, across organizations. Again, I will in the show notes, I will share a link to the Deloitte reports. So everybody has access to it. Read it. Uh, reach out to me on Twitter if you have your own thoughts or ideas, whether, you know, positive ones or even a little bit of controversial ones. I like to hear all of those. So thanks, everybody, for listening to Ecology and this true first Think Think episode. Future episodes are already in planning. Follow Ecology on Twitter and LinkedIn uh, so you can sign up and be a part of future episodes. Follow there to also pick up other show announcements as well as other, other IC news. And if you're not already a subscriber, you can find Ecology on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, again, to all the thinkers on this episode, thank you very much for being on here. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And if internal comms is your passion, Ecology is your podcast. Thanks for listening. Thank you.